back home in the hospitality state. I'm Jasmine Haynes and I'm here in St. Louis. Uh, day one has ended and I just want to give you a recap of what's happened. So first the day started off in worship and then shortly thereafter we moved into the morning bis business session. Bishop Christian Alsed from the Northern European and Eurasia Central Conference presided over the, the morning and he set some ground rules. He made everybody aware that though we are in a football stadium, we're having church for the next few days so different rules apply and he wasn't talking about Robert's rules of order. He took a page from Wesley's book and said do good, do no harm, and stay in love with God. So that set the tone for the morning business session. Most of the session was a bunch of reports ranging from uh, several administrative committees, uh, the commission, the Commission on General Conference, some from the Committee on Agenda and Calendar, and several things pertaining to the Council of Bishops and a report from the Commission on the Way Forward. Now, after lunch, business continued with the process to prioritize all the petitions. There are 78 petitions being presented in this General Conference, so they needed to prioritize them, and they did so with their related plans. What I mean by this is they were grouped together so that people could vote on them. Let me give you an example. There are 15 petitions related to the One Church plan. So all 15 of those petitions were voted on and grouped together as opposed to voting on those petitions individually to save time. So delegates voted on what petitions and related plans they felt were higher on priority list and lower on the priority list. So after several ballots, this is what they decided. The highest in priority was recommendations from Westpath related to pension liabilities. Um, the second is the traditional plan with the exception of some petitions that were sent to the Standing Rules Committee. Then there was a disaffiliation petition by Taylor, disaffiliation by Boyette, the One Church Plan, the petition on marriage, the petition on chargeable offenses, the definition of gender, interpretation of fidelity and marriage for deacons, fully inclusive way forward, one new dis discipline plan, and the petition on sexual practices. Then there was an election of officers for the committee. So what happens here is when uh, there's a pool of delegates who have been through training for a specific office which they are seeking to be elected. So after several ballots, delegates elected Reverend Joe Harris to be chair, Betty Kazadi to be the vice chair, and Carlene Miller to be secretary. Delegates did begin to vote on amendments on West Path recommendations since that was the first thing on the priority list, but decided to adjourn for the day to give more time to West Path petitions on day two. So day two's business session is going to pick up where day one left off, beginning with West Path recommendations, and it's going to move down the list of priorities throughout the rest of the day, the ones that were previously mentioned. Now remember, the goal of day two is to be in one legislative committee committee, perfecting and determining the material that is best to move forward to the plenary session. As always, you can find all updates and information, anything pertaining to General Conference, on the conference website at www.mississippi-umc.org forward slash GC2019. You can also follow us on Facebook at the Mississippi United Methodist Conference. Stay tuned for more information and updates.